Welcome to an introduction to IRIS. IRIS is a web-based platform for developing scenarios that's built around a standardized development template for use by educators and subject matter experts working together to build high quality scenarios. It supports the development of both mannequin-based and standardized patient-based scenarios, and you can also develop hybrids if you wish. IRIS also operates something called a fair share policy uh, across its clients. Uh, it is a community. You do have your own private space to develop scenarios, but you can choose to share and collaborate with other organizations if you wish. To help drive this, the fair share policy, if you sign up to this optional policy, says you will share a proportion of your scenarios with the others in the fair share community, and in return, you get access to the scenarios that they share. Uh, obviously increasing your access to a range of different scenarios. Iris is completely web-based, so you access it using any major browser. You can see here, I've got my menus on the left for creating new scenarios, mannequin-based or SP. Mannequin-based also supports hybrid. There's lots of help built in with animations and videos to take users through how to use Iris. We have access to forums so you can post messages, perhaps looking for collaborations with other members in the community. And you can see we provide links to a range of different standards of best practice. So if you're a simulation professional, perhaps working with a subject matter expert, they can log into IRIS and they have lots of guidance at their fingertips to help them understand how to develop a scenario. You can see it references the Anaxal standards, which are actually woven throughout IRIS. Also items like the SSH dictionary, Perl's debriefing tool, and the standards from the Association of Standardized Patient Educators. You have your library, which I've already opened here. This is where all of your scenarios are stored, giving you a central repository from your teams to be able to access and work together. But it also shows you items that may be shared with you. You can search your library using these filters here, for example, filter on things like organ system, or you can type using keywords. For example, I'm going to use a sepsis scenario here. I've got a pediatric six-year-old sepsis scenario. You see, if you hang over any scenario in the library, it gives you a description of what it's about. If I open that scenario up, this is an interprofessional mannequin-based scenario that was developed by several authors. You can see the first thing we see is the step by step wizard. This is what people tend to recognize with IRIS. And it takes authors through the different sections you could consider including in a scenario. You don't have to use all of the different elements, but it is designed to get authors to consider what should be included. You can see step one, we're looking at a description of the scenario and also classifications. The same items you saw in the library for filters, so you can set keywords. Iris is the editor, so you just click on any field to enter the information. And it does support copy and paste if you're wanting to bring information over from perhaps previous Microsoft Word templates that you may have used. Every field in Iris has detailed guidance on what should be included within that section as well. If I scroll down, you can see we referenced the Anaxal Simulation Design Standard with the 11 key criterion. Could be checked off as you're developing the scenario. But we also reference the Anaxal Symphographics. You'll find these detailed throughout IRIS. Great visual resources if you're working with subject matter experts who aren't particularly familiar with developing scenarios. Step two, we look at learning needs and objectives for the scenario you're developing with. Who are your learners? What are their requirements? And as this is an interprofessional scenario, you can see we've got different developers taking responsibility for different groups. And of course, under the guidance, we link to things like the Anaxal Learning Outcomes Standard there as well. Step three, we look at the faculty script for briefing staff who are running the simulation, the patient demographics and candidate brief, any specific instructions you want to give the learner and a tool for creating a patient record. IRIS is intended for use not just by educators and your subject matter experts, but also your sim techs or sim ops specialists. They're often left out of the authoring process. And so we make sure they get all the information they need. 
things like how should they configure the sim lab in this case an emergency department we are using a simulator and the basic monitor setup that we require we then go through a series of equipment checklists so you can highlight the equipment that's going to be needed for running the simulation and of course there's always a checklist summary here for adding any additional equipment that may not be listed in the pre-configured -pre elements above You have a section where you can detail the large effect, the equipment needed for vascular access and pumps and lines, and then this training prop section. So within IRIS, you can upload any resources that you're going to use in the simulation. For example, x-rays, blood gases. If you're a multiple site organization, you might want to upload photos of the large effect or the environment so different teams can replicate it on their site. And of course, anything you upload can be easily opened. Step seven, we look at IV fluids and medications. Step eight is where you detail your scenario states. You can have as many states as you like within IRIS. And within that, you can choose from vital signs, assessment, bloods and other results, physiological trends, if you're developing a hybrid scenario, you might be using a mannequin, but also have someone in a simulated role. You can give details of their communication, how they present themselves, their behaviors. The expected outcomes for the learners and the facilitator running the simulation, and any state-specific debriefing points. We then move on to the debriefing itself, which will collate together any state-specific debriefing points. This is free text, you can add whatever you like, but under the guidance, you'll see it references both the PEARLS debriefing tool and the ANAXEL uh, standard for debriefing. Again, providing those resources for authors so they have them at their fingertips when they're developing a scenario. Just mentioning briefly 11 and 12, you can set learner resources, perhaps prerequisite reading for learners. And step 12 is a questionnaire for the readiness to run. Have you ticked all the boxes? Uh, similar to the guidance from both the NAXL and the Association from Standardized Patient, Standardized Patient Educators. And also a lessons learned. So as you evolve a scenario, you can keep an order trail of changes you may make. But step 10 is the last main authoring step. Here we have access to the training props again. You can also upload any trainer resources, checklists, rubrics, for example, you want for staff running the simulation. And then we come to our master scripts. So this is, these are the outputs from IRIS. Let's say, for example, uh, you are using a GoMod simulator. We don't integrate with GoMod today. Um, you would generate your documentation for the scenario. So you can either click preview on this all or technical briefing and all those elements we've put into IRIS are collated together into a report, which is branded on who authored the scenario. Okay, you can see it's pulled all that information together. These reports only include the items you have used. Any sections of the IRIS wizard you don't use are omitted from the report. So you get a very clean report of just the equipment you're going to use, just the medications, and obviously all the scenario state information. This could then be used to go and program your GoMod simulator. Online is great, but obviously you want to be able to open this up and possibly print it. So you can also download exactly the same report as a Microsoft Word document, just making it a lot easier to access. Okay, you can see there again, same information is being put in. If you are a CAE client and using CAE Maestro driven simulators, you can download the programming file. So we believe you shouldn't have to rewrite scenarios if you're changing simulators. So we support both CAE Maestro driven and Laerdal simulators. All you do is download the file. That information is written out so you can then import it straight into CE Maestro. And everything we were just looking at in Iris is brought straight into the simulator software. There we go. So all the learning outcomes information, everything for the facilitator, including all the participant information and debrief, patient information, 
scenario states and the vital signs under patient records, those training props such as the x-rays have also been pushed out to the software and under preparation all of your equipment checklists for your sim tech or sim ops specialist and of course the millage effect in mannequin setup. So if you run scenarios where you typically advance onto a scenario state based on the actions of learners you can easily do that. This is all ready to go. If you perhaps have Lairdal uh, simulators as well, perhaps they're using Lairdal on a different site and you're all working together as a team. Instead of having to rewrite it, they just download the Lairdal version. If I download the SCX file here, it's going to open up in the Lairdal Sim Designer software. Okay, you can see here, same thing. Transition information is put out in the form of text. You just do just need to link the states together um, with events there. We can see it's pushed out that all the core information for the scenario and in the media files, again, access uh, to those training props. Now, you see me run through a scenario by myself. Um, obviously, this is about collaboration and sharing. You may be looking at a scenario that someone else has shared with you, but think perhaps it's not quite what you need, but it's very close. In which case you have the ability to duplicate the scenario. This will create your own version of it so that you can make amendments to it. But you will see that Iris always tracks who the authors are of the scenario and it keeps that audit trail. So original authors always get the credit for the work that they've done. If I want to use this in a team with my colleagues, I simply go to share. And from here, I can add colleagues to my team. Okay, you can see I have an owner of the scenario. If I want to add someone else to the team, I'm going to add my colleague David here. If I add him as a team member, I can control what access he has to the scenario. He doesn't have to be able to change everything in here. If he's a team member, probably create access. However, if I just want him to do a peer review, I might give him read-only access to the scenario, except the documents area, so you can upload a valuation form. If I'm sharing with others in the IRIS community, I may perhaps just make it read-only um, so that they can't make changes. I mentioned as well, we also support standardized patient scenarios. You can see I have one here uh, that's already open. The wizard is slightly different, very, very similar to the case template from the Association of Standardized Patient Educators. The principles are exactly the same, going through the different steps, but obviously the terminology uh, in phrasing is slightly different. You'll see all the elements from the case template uh, you're used to when you're developing standardized patient uh, scenarios. The outputs from IRIS are slightly different for an SP scenario. Here, obviously not pushing to the mannequin. Um, here you can actually generate the various sets of documentation for the different people involved. So the SP has their own briefing to bring them up to speed the role they're taking on, as does the learner. They get their own learner briefing or door chart. So again, you can work in a team to develop these scenarios, removing the need to email perhaps Microsoft Word documents backwards and forwards between different, uh, between different authors. Um, there are also integrations planned and underway at the moment uh, with CE Learning Space to bring uh, SP scenarios into there. Currently, you can do that with the latest versions of Learning Space using that CE Maestro export for the mannequin based as well. They can be brought in uh, using the same wizard uh, into Learning Space. So that's a brief introduction to Iris. I hope that's been useful. Uh, if you would like to learn more, please visit the CE website, uh, cehealthcare.com forward slash patient hyphen simulation forward slash iris and for any inquiries or questions you may have or perhaps to arrange a one-on-one -on -one virtual demo uh, for yourselves as well and you also see that iris is very active on twitter please follow at iris health sim thank you very much <laughs>